Hello. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your attention to this important matter. Thank you. As we look at what we want to discuss, the touch by war concept has been something that people didn't feel comfortable with for many years. So the purpose of this training is to talk about the number of award requests or what we're calling nominations we receive each year, the group that helped us make the guidelines for the eligibility criteria, and how we can move forward as a unified group. We were fortunate to have a team comprised of veterans, Blue Star Moms, individual members, group members, state coordinators, district coordinators, group leaders, and board. They carefully considered everyone's responses and over 800 people replied, letting them know their own personal thoughts and opinions about the concept of touch by war. This group worked very diligently to ensure that we had heard every voice that wanted to be heard. We asked the committee to share their thoughts about what they had done to work towards a solution, and these are their words. In the beginning, there was a dream. There was a dream that Catherine Roberts had about comfort and healing for our military. At the beginning, there was a limit of who we would serve. It was very defined. However, it wasn't long before Catherine realized how many others had been touched by war in different types of eras and sometimes not even by combat, including she noted that the first 300 quilts for soldiers, which became quilts of valor, over half of them were delivered to the psychiatric ward when they made their first donation. She wanted to have what she called the light of inclusion reach those who had been affected. As the organization grew, we wanted to reach those who were working stateside in the mortuary. Initially, there was a belief that everyone working there was in the service. We came to understand that civilians worked there as well. We feel they have been touched by war, and so we broadened our scope once more. The Touch by War Committee wanted to ensure that we included Catherine Roberts and June Moore, early founders and leaders of our organization, in the dialogue as we knew that many people would say, what does Catherine think about all of this? And so this slide is the most recent communication we have with Catherine. As we move through the training, we'll be discussing the eligibility criteria that was determined by the team. But I wanted to make sure that we understood the mission. The mission is to cover service members and veterans touched by war with comforting and healing quilts of valor. For years, we've been saying that only the service member or the veteran knows if they've been touched by war. But we believe that often family members, clergy, comrades, mental and emotional behavioral health providers can also see that someone has been touched by war. What we're now asking is that the nominator go into our system and know something about the service member or veteran they are nominating and that they have been able to observe the individual has either been physically or emotionally touched by war. This section begins the criteria and eligibility. We want to note that we serve the five branches of the military, the Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard that have been touched by war. We also serve the activated National Guard and reservists who've been touched by war, which includes those called up under Title 10, 32, or a combination of those. 
any merchant marine who was activated 1941 to 1945 and feel they were touched by war are also eligible. And the three categories of, of discharge are general, honorably, and medically discharged. I've since had many questions, and I've sort of paraphrased it this way. A living veteran who served any time from 1910 to now to tomorrow, whether during a declared war, a conflict, a police action, a peacekeeping mission, and even during times of peace, whether or not the person um, was called up as a reservist, a guard, or a merchant marine under the appropriate titles, and whether they were honorably, generally, or medically discharged. The critical point is if the veteran or service member feels touched by war emotionally or physically, we want to honor them and provide comfort and healing. We're very clear about those who are not eligible. If you've been discharged before completion of basic training, if you've been dishonorably discharged, and if the person is already deceased, we will not award a quilt of valor. We do accept that sometimes within a 24 to 72 hour period, a service member or veteran may pass away before the quilt of valor can be awarded. We are not requiring any component for the Quilt of Valor to be awarded. We are leaving it up to each individual group. However, there is an accepted timeline for the posthumous handover of a patriotic quilt or a patriotic quilt block. Again, we leave this up to the discretion of the group or group leader. We want to make clear that the board determines what our eligibility criteria are, and that currently the class of civilians that we are approving to receive a Quilt of Valor are those working at the Air Force Mortuary Affairs Operations, known as the Dover Mortuary. Should the board find another civilian group that meets the requirements, we will notify you. We want there to be flexibility for a local group to move someone forward in the nomination process. Currently, we are allowing those to be moved forward based on health status or concerns with age. We are leaving this at the group level for decision at this time. At this time, the committee and the board have determined that we will not award in groups larger than 20 people. In order to make sure that we understand the difference between a group award and grouping awards, this slide is a script or a prompt that a group leader, member, or state or district coordinator can use to let people know what a grouping means. A grouping means sometimes groups award once or twice a year. They take all of the awards that have been nominated and they group them into a ceremony. That ceremony might be 50 or so people. At this time, we are allowing the grouping of nominated service members and veterans. The critical component here is that they have been nominated through our online system and have come in and have waited their turn and are being awarded as the quilts have been produced by the local group. We understand that many of you participate in honor flights, retur returning warriors, and other types of events. We are going to allow an exception, however, it must be approved by the executive director at least 30 days in advance. We wanted to provide a script or a prompt for people to use when discussing what is different between honoring the honor flights and returning warriors, etc. 
the large group awards in our experience have tended not to have been nominated through our online system. They have been made as a group request and what we see, not in every case, but often, is that the needs of the group are put before those that have been nominated in our system. If you'll go back to slide two, you'll know that there are almost 15,000 nominated service members and veterans in our online award management system right now. Last count, there were over 9,000 unquilted tops that we had yet to complete. And the concern is that we have service members and veterans nominated from 2017 who are still waiting on the award of their Quilt of Valor. So our first question when you ask for permission to hold this type of event is a logistics question. And the logistics are how many people are waiting to be awarded in your area that have been nominated prior? And what types of materials and resources are you going to take away from the service of those who've been nominated by the public in order to meet this demand? The next criteria that you'll be asked to respond to is the concept of public trust. We realize that we have over 600 groups out there operating and making a lot of their own decisions, and we do consider ourselves a grassroots organization. However, there has to be continuity in how we award and when we award, and we also are accountable to ensuring that we show no favoritism whatsoever. Occasionally, the executive director and the board answer to the judge advocate general regarding how we award, how our system is managed, and we want to ensure that we pass all of our ethics reviews. We also have a public trust. The public is donating to our 600 plus groups in the amount of over $700,000 a year to serve the public. Unfortunately, these groups seem to take precedence over the individual. So when the request is put forward, there will also be public trust questions asked of you before your group award is approved.